Hey, Remarkable Lifers, this is Craig, and welcome to Truly Remarkable Life. Today, we're gonna cover part two of flying internationally out of the Guadalajara airport and back in. Today is the back end section. So we're gonna give that a start, but first, I gotta have a little drink of coffee. This is my uh, personally made mug by a friend who does pottery, and it's kind of nice to be able to have your coffee in the morning on a beautiful mirror door overlooking the mountains. I will show you that. Look at this. Isn't that freaking beautiful? But I've got my coffee here. Thanks, Harry, for the mug. Really appreciate it. Give you a little shout out. Let's get started. So we're going to take a look at the steps that you experience when coming back in. I just recently flew to the United States and visited family for the holidays and flew back in. So make sure you check out part one of that video. I'm gonna post that at the end of this video for the link. So coming back in, you're on a plane and many people who travel internationally are familiar with the process of filling out that immigration form on the plane. That has changed in many airports. You may or may not need to do that. So for the Guadalajara airport, in my experience, I did not have to fill one in. Is it, it is a digital FNM form. Ugh, not FNM, it's FMM, FMM. Oh my gosh, anyway, I fixed it, I'm not re-recording this. It's based on your um, passport, your ticket, all of that stuff, they have that stuff in the system already. You've already gotten your stamp when you're coming out, you know that that's marked resident temporal or resident permanente, you are good to go, okay? So the first thing to know is that when you arrive in the Guadalajara airport, um, in some instances, they will drop you on the tarmac. If you've never experienced that, they put a set of stairs at the plane and drop you off, and then there's a shuttle of some sort that will take you to the designated door that you need to go in into the terminal. Don't worry because they're only going to take you to the international door and funnel you right to the immigration agents. They're not gonna let you run around. They know that you are an international traveler and you have to go through that process. So in my case, I got on the bus, I just kind of followed the crowd. You, it's a one minute ride up to the door. They let you out and you get funneled right in. Once you get up to that immigration agent, you need to make sure that you have your passport and your temporary, temporary or permanent residency card available. So have it out, ready to go. Um, don't stress out. It, you just go next person in line, they call you up and you hand it to them. Um, just they will look at it, they will mark you, make sure that they have marked you re-entering as a resident. Um, and I mean, they have your card. If you've presented your residency card for Mexico, if you have that, um, or your passport, they should mark it appropriately. But it's always good to double check that to avoid any problems with your residency. Once you've achieved a successful stamp and, a pat and they wave you on, then it's again going to funnel you right into the next area. That next area contains the baggage, the baggage pickup, um, the customs forms, and the customs line to go through for customs process to be checked. First thing you need to know is that there is a pillar that's right as you go into that area, at least there was in mine, or look for a pillar or a desk with some paperwork around it. You're going to need to fill out a customs form and you're going to need to put your passport ID number, your name, um, and if you're declaring or bringing anything in. This is where we'll pause. Make sure that before you travel, you understand what the customs rules are to come in and out of any country, any country. Most times it's seeds, nuts, foods, animals, those types of things, but there's also regulations on taxes and tariffs for certain electronic items or multiples of items or certain just different things that you're bringing back in. So you're gonna to need to understand that. In my case, I didn't have anything that I was worried about. So I was completely confident going through that I would be just fine, just waved right on through. Make sure that you understand that. And if you need to look that up, do that beforehand. So I filled out my form, make sure you have a pen. There's not any pens provided. So in my case, I was an, I'm a nice guy. So when I got done with my pen, I handed it to the crowd and somebody else took it, passed it around, I'm sure, or they kept it, whatever. But, um, if you have a pen, fill out your form, go get your baggage, 
Um, as your baggage comes through, make sure you have everything together. You have your passport, your card out, your residency card, and that form. And then go get into the line for customs. It's a lot like the pandemic grocery stores where they make one line and then they direct you to those next stations. The first thing you're gonna do there is you're gonna play a game show. So when it's your turn, you walk up and they will motion for you to hit a button. That button activates a random red or green light. So that's where the fun begins. If you get a green light, you're free to go, walk on through. Don't celebrate too much, don't draw attention to yourself, just go right on out. Again, you don't have anything with you that's a problem, so it's fine. Luck of the draw, you saved some time. Red light. Red light means you have to proceed to the customs agent. And that's where all of that information I told you to look up before comes in handy, because if you know what's in your baggage, you don't have to worry. And you can answer their questions and say, yes, that's a personal item, or um, that's, you know, tell them what it is. They will also engage you in conversation and ask you about your trip. Where did you go? Where have you been? Um, where do you live here in Mexico? Um, tell me about your life. So they're, they're, they're asking you those questions intentionally to get some more information, to see your reactions, and, um, and really just gauge the whole situation. That's their job. They're keeping you safe and also keeping things according to the, you know, making sure that everything's legal and, and, and all of that. Now, one suggestion I have is to pay attention to what they're doing. So answer their questions, but keep your eyes on your bags. A lot of times they'll divide and conquer. You have two or three bags. They're going to have two or three agents going through, and you know, each one going through a bag. So it's kind of disconcerting sometimes when you're sitting there and all of a sudden everything's just going everywhere. Keep your eyes on the bags, answer their questions. At, you can even ask them to do one bag at a time if you are comfortable with that. If they balk at it, don't argue. But you can ask um, and just say that there's, you know, oh, there's many important things in there. Please, you know, please one bag at a time or una maleta, por favor. Um, but again, don't stress out. Just keep it nice, keep it polite, and you should be fine. So now you're exiting customs. You go out of customs, whether you've gotten a red or green light and you've gone through the whole process, the next step is, do you need transportation? The best way to get from the Guadalajara airport to any of the outlying areas is taxi. The taxi service is regulated, so you will pay in advance so that there's no question about what the charge will be. And gentlemen are at the front doors putting you into a taxi cab. Those cabs you have already paid, you give them the, the ticket and that is all you need. You don't have to worry about anything else. Tipping is up to you. That's very simple. You can look that up online if you want to know about how much to tip. That's not what this video is about. So you go up to the taxi stand if you need a taxi and you tell them where you're going. So let's say you're going to Chapala or Ajijic or Riberas. You, you tell them where you're going. They're going to charge you or give you the amount in pesos. You pay them, they give you a ticket. You then take that ticket and you walk out the main doors to the outside, um, to the main exit. And there will be two or three guys standing there with vests on. And they're going to see your ticket in your hand and they're going to come right up to you. They take your ticket and they direct you to a cab. Once you get to that cab, they will load you up and get you in the cab and ready to go. And they'll either ask you an address or they will, or you will tell the cab driver once you get in. My suggestion is to have that written down. Have it written down on a piece of paper in maybe in Spanish and in English. Verify that address. And another suggestion is, is to put that in your Google Maps if your phone is working okay. And that way you know that there's no mistake about what town you're going to. A lot of street, a lot of towns in this area have town, uh, streets that are named the same. Sometimes that street runs all the way through two or three towns. So it's kind of like you know Washington Street, Jefferson Street in the United States, Main Street. Um, there will be streets that are duplicated in every town. That's very, very common here. So you want to make sure, you just want to make sure you're going to the right place. But if you have it written down and you hand it to them, um, or if you have it on your phone and you can show it to them, um, that or or, for, or let's hope you're very fluent in Spanish and then you can just share that with them because not every cab driver is fluent in English some are some are not 
Um, but I will tell you, I've never heard of somebody not getting to their destination. So just to recap, make sure you fill out the FMM form, FNM form on the plane if they ask you to, but most times it's digital coming into the Guadalajara airport. What is wrong with me? FMM, FMM. Know that um, that digital process is all, it's new, so there's some confusion about it. But as long as when you go through, the customs agent marks you as a resident, and you've gone through and you've gotten your bags, you've gotten your uh, customs form, and you did the red light, green light, and you got out, and you're in a cab, you're home free. The one last thing to note about coming back in to the Guadalajara airport is that it is very difficult to pick people up there because of the, pro the, the traffic that runs around. It may be beneficial to have, if you're being picked up, to have them park or to arrange in advance exactly where you're gonna be picked up. Um, it's, just a, it's just very crazy. But if you're getting a cab, they're, they're right outside the door, so you won't miss it at all. And that's it. So, thank you very much for joining us. I hope this was helpful. Please, please, please give this video a like and comment down below if you have any questions or any thoughts or tell us about your experience. We really appreciate when you subscribe to our channel because it helps our videos be seen by more people. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram because we share different things there to give you a better picture of what our life is like in Ajijic, Mexico. So thank you for joining us. You have a great day. And if you haven't already, go find your truly remarkable life. And don't forget to check out part one of this video about leaving Mexico via the Guadalajara airport. It should be right here somewhere. Or maybe I put it over my face. I don't know. There's a box. You can click it. But you can also go to our playlists. Stuff like that. Thanks. And don't forget to check part of...